time this morning. Please have a seat as we enter into a time of prayer and also thanksgiving. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for the rain. Thank you for the cool weather today. God, we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to guide, give us peace and direction. God, we continue to ask for prayer over Cindy Masterson this morning, Father, that you would continue to heal her. God, continue to allow the medicines to work. God, I just pray that you also be with Pastor Gary this morning, Father, as he's there with her. And God, I know his heart is to be here this morning, but God, you know where, is, where he's at this morning. And Father, we just also lift up Cody Wilson. He's a 17-year-old. He's having seizures, low heart rate. God, we ask that you would just bring about healing in his life. God, he's at Cook County our Cook Children's Hospital in Fort Worth this morning. Once again, we ask, Lord, we know that you are a healing God. God, for Vera Turner, God, she fell and broke her sternum and injured her arm. We ask, Lord, that you would just heal her, give the doctors wisdom. God, we give you thanks. Father, and we give you praise this morning for Morgan graduating from college from Lamar University. We're thankful for all of her family here this morning. God, that is such an honor and glory to you, Father, that you have allowed another person to finish their education. God, we give you thanks this day, and we lift these up to you, Father. And God, as you have taught us to pray, pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to welcome back our former pastor, Reverend E.D. Beasley. He's here this morning to do the baptism. For more life, one more. I want to say that. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, 
reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. We do. When you nurture one another in your Christian faith and life, and include this child now before you in your care. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. And we will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness, that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her, that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way in which is God.
and have our gentlemen come forward. We're going to dedicate our tithes and offerings this morning. I would have to say that our angel tree is looking very, very, very pretty this morning. And we want to just thank you for your continued giving. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the wonderful way that you provide for your church. God, that you're giving from people's hearts. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would now bless this offering. God, just use it to your kingdom. We give you thanks in that name that is Lord every name. The name of Jesus. Amen. standing as we declare our affirmation of faith found on page 881 in the red hymnal I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
if we can have all the kids come forward. My wife Becky is going to do the children's moment this morning. So if you are a child, come on forward this morning.
so that it, those who believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's one of the things we need to remember is God's love for us is more than anything we could ever imagine. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for loving us and thank you for sending your son. Thank you for this season and we love you very much. Amen. Pastor Gary called me this week and he informed me that he would not be able to be here this morning. He asked me would I share in the sermon this morning. And always at Christmas time we always think, well, it's, you know, it's, it has to be the season of Advent and the, and the message. And we can't really ever change the message because the message pretty much stays the same. If you'll stand with me this morning, we're going to read the scripture that is in, the, that is in your bulletin. And then I'm going to add one additional scripture to it. But we're going to start with Luke 10, verse 27. He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. I want to also add Romans 8, 28. For all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this morning. Once again, Father, we give you honor and praise for the wonderful weather. Even though it's a little rainy, God, it's cooler this morning. Thank you, Father, in the midst of the, the time of the season and the hurriedness and the busyness, God, that you have just given us uh, a reason for celebration and joy. We ask this in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. As I was saying, when you begin to look at the season and you go, wow, you know, how does the story look differently? I think sometimes we have to look at it through a different lens. And we have to see. Look at the time frame. It's kind of a comparison to our world that we live in today. You say, Tim, how does that work? How does that scripture in Luke 10:27? The love of the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. At this time of the year, I think, wow. Do we make room, in the end, for Christ in our life? We get so busy, and we do, we get very busy. You know, the malls are busy, the online shopping's going. And in the midst of that, I guess if I was going to title a message this morning, it would be Disruptive Change. Because, see, during that time, that the whole culture of that world was changing. The culture of our world is forever changing. Can I get an amen? It changes all the time. And we live in a very chaotic, crazy world, just as they did then. And how symbolic is it that we baptize a baby today? That we are celebrating a baby's life. And at this time of year, we are celebrating the life of our Savior. We're welcoming him. You know, yesterday, as, as I was, you know, riding to the mall, I thought, wow, you know, Jesus, when he came, there was no room in the inn. For one, imagine for a moment Mary, who was a teenager. You know, some people say she was 13, 14, 15. Imagine that, coupled with just being a teenager. Imagine all the struggles that go in with that. And all the emotions that you have going on. And then you're told by an angel, hey, you are going to bear the son of God. It's got to be a lot to take in. It disrupted her world. It disrupted. Here's Joseph. He, he's going to marry her. Then he finds out she's with child. Now imagine for a moment you're Joseph. The angel comes to you and says, Hey, look, it's by the Holy Spirit. She's going to have a baby. He was going to put her away. Which was, that's what they did in that culture. It disrupted him. When we allow Christ in our heart, our mind, and our soul, He disrupts us. He disrupts us. Now, we look at it and go, well, you know, it didn't always turn out. Just like we came in this morning and the sound system didn't work like we wanted to. But we made something happen. 
God has it all under control. So we say, how does, how does this scripture in Luke 10, 27 work? Well, when I have all my heart, my soul, and God has a hold of it, then I'm okay with disruptive change. I flow with it. For a moment, I want you to turn to somebody around you. And if you could say to them, if you could change one thing about yourself, I want you to take a moment and say to them, if I could change one thing. Now, don't give them a list. We're not asking for 10 things. But if you could say, I want to change one thing about myself, what would it be? Okay, give it, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Go ahead. Turn to the person next to you, around you, and if I could change one thing, what would it be this morning? change. The most amazing thing is about change is that sometimes we anticipate it, sometimes we don't. As a church, we've gone through change. For Becky and I, we went through a change. This time last year, we were planning on getting married, but we had no idea we would be in Texas. I didn't see that. I didn't think that would be the case. Here, Becky pretty much grew up with what's I had to. I did say it right. But this is her whole life. She did stuff she never known was living up in North Texas. Although South Texas is better. You know. <laughs> All she ever known was pretty much living in North Texas. Where the weather is a little bit cooler, I'm sure, this morning than it is than it was here yesterday. I was thinking, my goodness. If you live in South Texas, you know you just anticipate it, right? One day it can be cold, next day it can be you know, hot, and so forth. But God disrupts our lives by the change He brings. Change is not always equal. Sometimes there are seasons of change in our life. Morgan graduating from college, that's a change. That's a great change. You know, I'm sure for Pastor Gary and Cindy, they were not anticipating she would be in the hospital this long. But you flow with the change. Seasons of our lives don't always come predictably. They never come as we often expected. How many know that it doesn't always flow like it's supposed to? It doesn't always fit. You think, man, we're going to do X, Y, Z, and then you end up doing A, B, C. We all know. Some change is really great. Now, if the sound system had worked this morning, at this point, I was going to turn to Gary and say, play that goofy modem sound that we all used to have to listen to to dial up. You know those 40 hours of AOL that everybody got those discs in the mail? How many are thankful for Wi-Fi? And we don't have to deal with that crazy noise anymore. It's hard to believe that was 20 years ago. Sometimes change takes on different looks. For some of us, it doesn't appear, again, as we, as we think it should be. How many know we have our wonderful autocorrect on our phone? You ever send a text? And you think you said one thing and another person on the other end is going, like, say, meet me for dinner. But what it actually says, let's, let's have beans for dinner. And you say, no, 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 I want beans for dinner. So you were showing back, and I don't want to do that. Then the other person said, what do you mean you don't want to do that? What do you, you know what I mean for dinner? Change. We have to adjust to change. 
Sometimes in our lives, there's a disruption. Sometimes in our lives, we face turmoil and struggle. At this time of year, a lot of times psychologists will tell you that this time of year, people deal more with depression and anxiety and fear, just as they did in that season when Jesus came to the world. How many know that we are living in a world where we deal with taxes and we deal with terrorism and we deal with anxiety in our news and we deal with things like San Bernardino? And we sometimes go, wow, how much did that disrupt those people's lives? But the reality is, is it also disrupts ours because then we get fearful. But the great thing about the Word of God is when he comes into our heart, in the midst of the fear, he gives us a peace. It says that his peace passes all understanding. We don't understand. It's not comprehensible in our minds, but we know it's there. It's a peace. The other day, in the news, there was a 13-year-old girl, and they don't know why, right on I-45 going towards Galveston, she jumped out of the school bus, and she died instantly. Nobody knows why, just yet. I think they'll figure it out. Well, what goes through a 13-year-old's mind that they think life isn't worth living? Now, we don't know the backstory. There could be a number of things going on in her life. But in the world of her family and the world of the people who were on that bus and the, the world of those who were riding along I-45, change just happened. A change that, of an image that will probably forever be there. A disrupt. Sometimes we're disrupted in what we think should be the direction we should go. It's the plans that we have, right? Well, I think I should take this direction. And God's saying, no, I think you ought to take this direction. And you're going, no, I want to go this direction. And, you know, it's very easy to get sidetracked. It's very easy. Again, imagine Joseph for a second. He's told all his friends, hey, I'm getting married. And then he finds out Mary's pregnant. Yeah, that's going to go over real well in the society we live in. How's he going to tell everybody that? Oh, what happened? Well, you know, God came to me and said that she was going to marry this child. Yeah, that really works. <laughs> you know. Sometimes I think God has that, that unique sense of humor. I mean, imagine for a second, you know, it's just like Moses up on the, the mountain, you know, when he, when he comes back down and he sees the children of Israel, and he's ready to pass down the, the Ten Commandments, and he breaks them. What's he going to do? Go back up and say, oh, well, you know, oops, I'm sorry, I just got to make a mistake. God already knew. It just disrupts. At the end of 2014, you may have set goals for 2015. You may have set things in motion that you thought were going to happen in 2015. Did they happen? Did it happen the way you wanted it to? Or was it disrupted? The one thing I know for sure is that when you let God have it, it disrupts. And I don't want to allude that, you know, Becky and I coming here or Gary or Cindy coming here, that's a disruption. It's a disruption in the sense that it wasn't planned. But it's worked out incredibly awesome in the sense of for the church and for the student ministry and the thing that God is doing in the life of our church here. You know, God is doing some remarkable things in the life of this church. This church has a wonderful legacy and a wonderful history. But in 2016, is God going to be asking this church to disrupt what it's been always doing? <clears throat> so we can get in the middle now. Yeah, probably am. Is God asking us to change and do something different that we've never done before? Maybe. That will come with time. Again, when Becky and I began to plan our wedding for, you know, this time last year, you know, we had an idea of, well, we want to get married in Houston, and, you know, there was another church over in the Pasadena area where I had friends who attend, and, you know, we were thinking about there. 
Nothing wrong with that church. But then we, as we came here, we said we want to celebrate in this joyous occasion with our church family here. It changed. And then if you came to our wedding, you saw that our, our wedding was very different. It was very different, especially the end. If you weren't there, it's very interesting to catch on video. You know, when we turned around and we looked at the audience, they were not expecting us all to have dark shades on. Us, Becky, the groomsmen, the bridesmaids, they all had it. It was different. If anybody knows me knows that I don't ever do anything wrong way. Even my father-in-law said, well, I knew something was coming because, you know, everything else had been kind of laid back. One last thing. You know, we hear the story of Peter. You know, when Jesus came into Peter's life, he disrupted Peter's world. Here Peter thought he was a spiritual man. Oh, I'll go to the death with you. You don't need to die. You don't need to die. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Oh, that's not what he wanted to hear. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to be your disciple. I'm supposed to be your right-hand man. I'm the guy here. You know, I'm not going to go anywhere. People often look at Peter and say, well, you know, he jumped out of that boat. There he went. Jumped out of that boat. Started walking on the water. Then he got panicky and he started to sink. You know, the ones who were saying that way got still sitting in the boat. <laughs> he got out of the boat. In 2015, did you get out of the boat or were you like a guy still sitting in the boat? See, their world got disrupted too, but Peter's got really disrupted. Because Peter also got to experience something through Jesus. It was amazing. And lastly, this. You haven't figured out how close there. Lastly, this folks, as I was thinking about that baby coming when Jesus came into the world, and I thought about the aspect of the season, when there were so many busy people going about doing their thing, there was a crazy king who was trying to kill all the babies, baby boys, God had a plan, he disrupted, he disrupted his plan too. But then I thought, wow, there wasn't room in the inn. We all know there were no hotels back in those times like there are today. The busyness of the world, there was no room in the inn. Sometimes in the busy, busyness of our lives, we get so busy with the times and the seasons that we fill in a place in our heart for the king. Who's coming? It's amazing that. God can help himself be a baby. When you look at it from this perspective, he still had it all under control, even in the very manner. But how many know that he's still into the dirty manger, the unkempt place, the unsanitary heart, and he changes it? Because he, in the midst of that, he changed the world. In the midst of changing their heart, changing their direction, disrupting, he changed them. And because of him, he changed all of us. So at this time of the year, I ask you, have you made room in the end of your heart? Is he in place? As you go forward into 2016, are you going to allow him to disrupt you in your world? That's a question all of us have to ask. Because we're moving forward into a place. And it may not be comfortable. Most of the time it's not. You know, when Becky and I moved here, we had struggles with the electricity. We had struggles with trying to get into the house at first. There were just a few different little big struggles. And they were. They were little inconsistencies and things that we just couldn't control. But God had it all under control, and if He just says, "If you just trust me and get out of the boat, you'll experience something that's amazing." Is God asking you to get out of the boat? Is He asking you to take a step? Is He asking you to disrupt your life? Is He asking you to do something you've never done before? Is He challenging you as the body to think outside the box? Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, God, for everyone who's here. 
God, I just ask, Lord, that you would just continue to move in our hearts and our lives. And God, I would just ask, Father, that we could just allow you to disrupt. Disrupt our world. Because we know all things work together for good to those who love you, who are called according to your purpose. We give you thanks in the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus. Amen. We'd like to offer a time of invitation. If you are looking for a church home, if you're looking for a time to connect, I believe in opening the altar. If you would like to come forward and have some time at the altar just to pray. This is your opportunity as Jim leads us in our new Let's stand and sing it with you.